Hi everybody! Uh, it's the weekend again, so you know what that means. I'm Christine, your digital technology librarian, and I'm here with yet another Film Rec Friday for you all. Uh, we are going to focus in on science fiction and fantasy films, so if you're a sci-fi or fantasy fan, hopefully one of these will speak to you. I've also thrown in some nostalgic titles from the 80s and the 90s, so if you're an 80s or 90s kid, some of these might uh, remind you of back in the day. Uh, as always, these recommendations are all available to you for free with your digital library, with your library card uh, through our video services. Those are Clevenet Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. Again, your Milan Berlin library card will get you access for free. So without further ado, let's get started. So our first two recommendations both come from Clevenet's Overdrive, and the first of those recs is the movie The Illusionist. Now, the Illusionist is fascinating in that it blends both fantasy and mystery together, uh, so much so that you never really know what's what's exactly a mystery or is this a fantasy movie? What's going on? Uh, and I actually really like that about it. Um, the film follows the story of the eponymous Illusionist uh, as he rediscovers his childhood love, uh, this young woman who uh, is essentially an aristocrat by birth, whereas he's just one of the regular populace, so that was never going to work out anyway. Um, she's unfortunately engaged to this sadistic, dangerously violent prince of Austria. Um, these two male characters are played by Edward Norton and Rufus Sewell, respectively. Norton is the illusionist, and Sewell is absolutely gleefully monstrous as this uh, despicable prince. Uh, he plays villains a lot and he's really good at it. Uh, if you've only ever seen Sewell in, say, uh, the Victoria series, this is definitely a different side of him. Uh, but I, I love his portrayal. It's, it's not mustache twirly and over the top, but at the same time, it's not like, he has layers, but they're all like horrible layers. Uh, it, he's he's great, and he he does make a really good villain. I love and I love the the portrayal of that prince. Anyway, um, Norton and Sewell are your two male counterparts, and then the female lead uh, is played by Jessica Biel, whose uh, performance roster I'm not super familiar with, uh, but she does an excellent job with the female lead character. Uh, she doesn't make her too damsel and distressy. Uh, she's definitely very interested, interesting and layered, so does a great job. And then finally, Paul Giamatti plays this Viennese inspector, and he's marvelous in this character. He essentially is the audience character. He's taking all of our places in this movie. Anyway, so you've got these great performances all the way around. Really, really fantastic. And then you've got this engaging storyline that makes you question what is real and what isn't. So, of course, the movie is called The Illusionist. But the entire time you have to ask yourself, am I just seeing something that they're all seeing. Is this like a dream? Is this a story that somebody's telling? Uh, what's fantasy? What's not fantasy? Uh, and I really love that sort of thing in, in films in general where you can't be sure uh, the reliability of the narrator. It, it's, it's, it's excellent. It, it's borderline caper film like and those are that's definitely my favorite kind of movie. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, The Illusionist is definitely worth watching with those great performances and that element thrown into it. So if you're looking for something really interesting and sort of that'll keep you off kilter, check out The Illusionist this winter, uh, this weekend. You won't be sorry. My second recommendation from Clevenet Overdrive is totally different. Um, it is the, the uh, 1980s movie called Short Circuit. Uh, ridiculously cute film. I still remember fondly from my childhood and uh, it's about a high-tech robot that was designed for warfare uh, but it ends up being sen sentient and like sweetly curious about everything in the world. Uh, 
after this freak lightning storm. So not overwhelmingly believable, but I feel like the mood and the tone was very typical for that particular era of the 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 80s. Uh, anyway, he escapes this military installment in which he is essentially trapped and he ends up befriending a young woman played by Ali Sheedy uh, and he forms this really sweet friendship with her. She just decides to try and introduce him to all of like the sweet charming things in the world and he really loves learning about it. Um, he's a, very much like a child. Uh, now, since it's from the 80s, like 50% of all films, it also stars Steve Gutenberg. Um, that's obviously not statistically accurate, but I do feel like a lot of movies in the 80s starred Steve Gutenberg. And in every Steve Gutenberg movie, you kind of know what you're going to get. Sweet, silly, a lot of heart. Um, not like an intense amount of depth, but definitely enough to make you think of it fondly. Uh, and that's exactly what Short Circuit is. It's really funny. It's really sweet. Um, great family film. Uh, and it has like very serviceable actors. It also stars Fisher Stevens, whom I absolutely love. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of films today, but for a period of time in the 80s and the 90s was in tons of movies as well. Um, and it's just one of those warm, fuzzy movies that will make you smile. So if that's what you're looking for this weekend, Short Circuit is definitely it. Uh, and if you're not saying number five alive by the end of the movie repeatedly, then I just don't know what to say to you. Uh, so yes, please check out Short Circuit. Um, let it put a smile on your face and um, enjoy. My second set of recommendations both come from Hoopla Digital. And these two movies are uh, similarly opposite ends of the spectrum as far as mood, tone, genre, everything goes. Um, the first one is Ex Machina. And I can't say enough good things about Ex Machina. It's wicked trippy, probably one of the best suspenseful science fiction films I've seen in years. Uh, I remember when I first watched it, I was like, this is amazing. Performances are amazing. Uh, it actually won a lot of accolades. Uh, and that's pretty rare for sci-fi. I mean, especially a smaller sci-fi film. I mean, this is not backed by huge uh, marketing schemes and things like that. You just have ludicrously solid performances and an amazing story. And that's what got it through. Um, it even managed to win some acting awards, which again, very rare. Uh, it's a super small cast, like super small cast. And the script is just loaded with twists and turns, but they're all really subtle. It's not like in your face until the moments when you're like, oh my goodness, what am I watching? Uh, it's, it's really, really awesome. Uh, so in the story, you've got Caleb, this programmer for a business. He gets lucky one day and he ends up being selected to go to the estate of his company's um, CEO, who happens to be sort of reclusive, eccentric billionaire who lives on an estate that's isolated and supposed to be palatial. So he goes there and he ends up having like this intensely uncomfortable interaction with the CEO. Um, whose name is Nathan and, uh, Nathan eventually gets around to letting Caleb know that it's not really a prize that Caleb's won so much as a spot in Nathan's new test, his new test about a robot that he's built, a robot so human in nature that he needs to figure certain elements out and there's no way to do that without an outside assistant. It's, like I said, very trippy and 100% will make you think and will make your mind go in a million different directions. Um, 
all three of the main actors uh, who are played by Domo Gleason, he plays Caleb, um, Oscar Isaac plays Nathan, and then Alicia Vikander, she plays Ava, the robot that Nathan designs. And all three of those performances are incredible. Uh, Vikander, I believe, was awarded uh, at the Golden Globes. I mean, that doesn't happen for science fiction movies very often. Um, you know, it was just amazing. And, you know, when you find, when you see the film, and then if you look into how they've done the special effects, which are excellent, it's just, it's mind boggling. Now, there's a lot of suspense, uh, a lot of thrills and chills, and a lot of just really interesting interpersonal drama that's that goes on within this movie. And it's so quiet in places, again, because the cast is so small, a lot of times it feels like you're watching just this really tiny black box play. And I, I just had such a good time when I watched it. I, I strongly recommend it if you're a fan of science fiction, uh, even more so if you just like small, tight casts. It, this is, Ex Machina is really, really, really phenomenal. So please do give it a shot. You won't regret it. My other recommendation from Hoopla is Little Monsters, which is the least Ex Machina film maybe ever made. Um, it's ridiculous. It's a family fun kind of movie. It's definitely much more lighthearted. Um, it is also from the 80s, and this time it stars two more icons from that particular era, Howie Mandel uh, and Fred Savage, who are absolutely marvelous as the kinds of characters they always play are. Um, it involves the misadventures of a young boy, Brian, uh, who discovers there's a whole entire world of monsters hiding under the beds of children everywhere. Uh, it's very, very Monsters, Inc. before Monsters, Inc. Uh, and it's also way weirder. And then it's as if Monsters, Inc. had like hundreds of Randalls rather than Mikes and Sullys. Uh, the monsters in Little Monsters are generally silly, but also more menacing in, a, in, in a, pretty much every way. It's it's very interesting. Uh, I definitely think today's kids would still absolutely get a kick out of it uh, because it's still funny and it's got that sort of slapsticky humor that Howie Mandel is always really good at. Um, even if you watch him today on, say, America's Got Talent, he has that sort of over the top and out there kind of wit. And that's what's on predominant display here in Little Monsters. Um, anyway, so after he discovers that all of these monsters are living under these beds of kids, he actually travels to this monster world and everything is all fun and games, of course, until he discovers that he himself, Brian, of course, the little boy that I was telling you about, uh, is actually morphing into a monster himself and has to figure out how to halt this transition. Um, again, it's just a lot of mindless fun, but it is definitely fun. If you're my age and if you grew up in the 80s and the 90s, you've probably seen this. Uh, it's always fun, I think, to rewatch these movies that we watched as kids to see how well they've aged or not. And honestly, it was still silly and still entertaining. I still chuckled a couple of times. So please do give Little Monsters a try. It's, it's definitely fun. So my very last recommendation for this week is from Canopy as usual, and it's for the movie What We Do in the Shadows. Now, this movie is absolutely hilarious, uh, but it is more of a send up slash mockumentary than it is a traditional sci-fi fantasy film. Uh, that said, because it does involve vampires and because I love it so much, I'm still going to recommend it this week because... I think it will definitely speak to a lot of people. Um, anyone who's seen a vampire movie 
regardless of whether it was Nosferatu or one of the Twilight films, we'll definitely get the humor in this. Um, it's essentially the spinal tap of vampire movies. Like, the references are very clear and are always funny. Um, it's set up as a documentary film and it follows the, these four vampire roommates initially. Um, these four vampire roommates, they all have very dis different personalities. They all come from different eras of time and that causes a lot of problems. And they're insistent on the fact that they're just regular guys. Not only do they not always get along because of these disparate personalities, but they also have to deal with things like rents and lousy neighbors. It's just that they also happen to need to, you know, figure out ways to drink copious amounts of blood periodically. Um, and therein lies a lot of the humor. You'll have these moments of like, oh, just these guys who can do things like not be seen in mirrors and float. Oh, wait, they have to stop and like accost someone. It's, it's ridiculous and it's wonderfully funny. Um, the face you're going to recognize the most, most likely is Taika Waititi's. Um, now Waititi was the director of the Thor Ragnarok movie. Um, also probably, uh, you might recognize him from Jojo Rabbit. Uh, he also played Korg in Thor. Um, he's brilliant and he's such a good writer. And what we do in the shadows has his fingerprints all over it. He is one of the directors. He is one of the writers. He is of course, one of the four vampires you're prim primarily following. Um, and he brings such likability to his characters, no matter what they are. I mean, he is playing essentially someone who's killed people for centuries and yet you still really like him. Um, he, is the only vampire to have sort of a love line through it. And it's a ridiculous and hilarious uh, storyline and, and little plot offshoot. Um, it's definitely unexpected and it's, it's definitely funny. Um, in any case, all of the actors are really, really good in this. They know just how much of a nod to give to the audience, especially since it is being filmed as sort of this documentary. Um, so their ability to break that fourth wall works in a film way, but then in also a meta way. It's It really is just such a fun movie. If you like mockumentaries, if you've watched any vampire film ever, please do give what we do in the shadows a try. You won't regret it. It'll be a good way to, to laugh this weekend. So with, uh, with that, it's my last recommendation for the week. Um, I hope everyone has a safe and fun, uh, 4th of July weekend. Um, uh, and hopefully we will see you again next week. If you have any recommendations, as always, please put them below in the comments. Uh, and with that, we will see you next week. Bye.